Life is sweet Let it sweep you off your feet Hey, this is Allie. Find your joy. And we are back again with Hank Lionheart Part 2. I hope that you are enjoying uh, the last one that we did. And you're sure going to enjoy this one, too. And here we go. What a life. I, I just, uh, it's just amazing to me, the experiences that you've you've had. And and that I, what I love, one of the things I love about you, too, is like you said, you're talking to younger people when they're asking you um you know, how to get into it. I I remember, you know, I don't remember a lot right after my accident, but here's something that I, re- that I, for whatever reason, yeah. uh, I've never forgot it. I was, you know, I mean, I could barely hold, hold the thing. <laughs> I was pretty mangled up in my head still, but I remember posting some of the paintings when I when I first did it and and you sharing with me hey Allie um, one of the things I learned in in art school was to make sure that if you're not going to frame it that you paint around the around the outside the edge it just it just kind of frames and makes it look nicer yeah, yeah. I mean, you, didn't, you didn't have to share that with me you didn't do that but I never forgot it I never yeah. forgot yeah. that, and and now I always make sure I do that. Did you notice a huge difference when you did it? Oh yes, it's just, it's it's day <laughs> and night, and then I can it can even be part of the painting. You can extend it. You can either have it flat, or you can kind of extend the painting to go yeah. around, wrap around. It's, well, it's a game like, changer. I can't see that up on that one on the wall there, but but you know, like the painting of, of the edge of the hand goes around the side. So when you're viewing it a bit from the side, it gives it a dimension, right? It's pretty. It, oh. it, it's neat, but uh, that's uh, you know one of the things that uh, that I learned early on, and then I never uh, I never liked to frame canvases anyway. Always, and and these gallery canvases are made made for that. There's yes. no easy and a couple small nails, boom, you're in, you're in. That's right. right. But uh, it's really really great. <clears throat> you know, they're um, it's it's uh, I think it's you know incumbent upon us older folks and stuff to uh, you know to share and to uh, you know give uh whatever uh, advice we can to people that ask for whatever reasons so you know if i get asked about my art i'm happy to you know say hey well try this try that i got a buddy of mine in vancouver he's a really great painter and, and i was painting with uh you know my black right out of the tube right and uh, he looked at my face those are great he said but you know your black could be a lot better i said really easy i just add any other color red blue whatever just a bit of it to it and it'll make a difference and it does like you know, so now that's what I do. I'll I'll use like ninety percent black with a little dab of blue or something, and it just it just brings the, the black to life. So there's another another trip for you. <laughs> Is that, I, I I love that. I love that. Well, David and I, of course, we've started for my birthday last year. He bought. We loved Bob uh, Ross, and so yeah. he he bought us a class with uh bob ross of course passed but bob yeah. ross style so we started taking it and it's a game changer because it like you said they they teach about blending colors and and dimensions and things like that before then everything was just um me really just getting my feelings out onto pay, onto the canvas yeah. not yeah. really fully even knowing what i was trying to do not maybe even trying to do a painting as in to look like anything i was just getting feelings out because I needed to do something with what was going on inside of me. But when I see one of the things that now is, is um, the healing progresses, it's, it's the, um, it's the centering. That's yeah. one of the things that I see that painting does. And you were describing that much more eloquently just a little while ago, but just the, the focus that it brings for people. Yeah. And the thing is all the little tricks and all the little things that you get are really just more tools. Yeah, right, to the journey, right? I mean, and if you can find things that uh, are technical that help improve what you do, you know, when we went into when I went to art school, we took watercolor class, so we took everything, and you know, and you know, and I can I don't watercolor anymore, but you know, I learned how to do perfect petals just with the turn of a brush and things like that, right? That they would yes. teach, and and you know, different strokes for this and for that and whatever, and. Uh, so there's all that technical stuff that, you know, and it's funny because uh, I learned all that stuff back in, you know, in, uh, you know, I was in art school from uh, 64 to 68. And uh, it's, it's, I still remember it, you know, and it's funny since I started painting it, a lot of it has come back to me. And, 
And uh, it's amazing your work, and I and 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 interesting that you and isn't that amazing? And um, I don't know, just such a uh, an awesome gift to you that your dad saw that in you and and looked up ways to make to help you be successful. Totally. Totally. I'll tell you another funny story. <laughs> I came home from art school my first season. You know, I came home at Christmas. And of course, I brought some of my, my, they wanted to see what I was doing. So I brought some stuff. And of course, I had a series of, we had uh, life drawing classes, like, you know, with nude models, right? So I brought some of my life drawings home. And of course, I'm showing everything to my mom and dad. They're sitting there and, and whatnot. And then I pull a couple of these life drawings on them. Says, oh, that's disgusting. Don't show me that. He's freaking out, right? Oh, don't show me that. Put that away. Put that away. So I put it away and so the rest stuff. So she heads off into the kitchen. My dad says, let me see those again. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> yeah. Just for artistic value. Just for artistic value. But, you know, even then, I mean, you know, we had, we learned things from, uh, in drawing class. I mean, uh, one, uh, we'd have classes where they would have us put, uh, you know, pencil to paper and never look at the paper and just look at the model and draw. Oh, yeah, okay. So it really train the feel of your hand to your eye. And then we would have things where we would have to use our left hand, you know. And it was like th these really weird things you didn't quite understand. But you do those things and you go through that series of things, all of a sudden your drawing started to improve, you know, things right. started to happen, right? And, and you would you would sort of see where the meaning of what they were trying to teach you. And that makes had, sense. And, and makes the other sense. cool thing is the art school I went to was, um, it was called the Burnley School of Professional Art. It, it no longer exists. It's now part of the Seattle Art Institute. But okay. when I was there, it was run by a, a man uh, that was, uh, he originally was uh, one of the top art directors in Seattle in, in the agency business. So all the teachers were actually art directors and creative directors from ad agencies. So they taught like a couple of hours on a Wednesday or whatever. So you had people that were hands-on if you're you know, doing what I was doing, wanted to learn how to go into an ad agency and whatnot. And the other uh, cool thing that they did was they treated the projects like an ad agency. So you'd go in, you get your project, and they told you this right off the bat. We're gonna we're gonna grade you on three things. <clears throat> we're gonna grade you number one on your concept, the idea you come up with. We're gonna grade you number two on the execution of the idea, how well you render it, and we're gonna grade you number three on how you present it. So those are the three main criteria, right? So I would always score exceptionally well on concept, like coming up with ideas. I'd score pretty good in, in execution and I'd always score phenomenal in presentation because I could talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, it, and, that, and those are the things that ended up in my career. I ended up becoming, uh, you know, a creative director because I, I had good conceptual skills and good presentation skills. Right. So how you do that, right? And I mean, I worked hard at my uh, execution skills and they've gotten better. And like even my paintings, uh, when I started them, you know, uh, eight, nine, ten years ago or whatever, I mean, they've come a long ways again. Like, now it's it feels real good to paint. You know, for a while it was like, oh, geez, am I going to do this, you know? And, but uh, it uh, they come back to you, those skills, right? And you just, uh, you, you just, you know, you, you press on, right? It's amazing. It's, it, it, is, it is amazing that when you, um, that they train you and you worked hard at it, and then it just... I guess it's it just becomes part of the way you do things. Uh, you know, it's I guess it's sort of like uh, learning how to drive a stick shift, really, right? Remember how yeah, it yeah. all seemed so hard at first? And the, you remember that? <laughs> yeah, there's so much to think about. I'm never going to be able to do this. And when you were talking about uh, uh, drawing without looking at it, I thought that reminds me of back many years ago when I was learning how to play piano and my piano teacher was telling me to stop looking at my hands. I yeah, thought, yeah. how am I ever going to hit the right notes? Yeah. What are you, crazy? <laughs> I sit down, sit down and get a piece of paper and a pencil and yes. look at the guitars on the wall behind you and just try drawing one without looking at it. You'd be amazed how how you do it a few times and then, hey, that's not bad. It looks pretty much, you know, it's funny how that, yeah. you know, that, that vision transfers into 
your, your yeah, I like that. I, I'm I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna try doing that. And and it's interesting to me. Um, I have a few friends like yourself who are rather exceptional artists, and they are all people who are really good at things. I find are very generous and gracious about sharing them. It's only, um, you know, maybe if a person feels insecure about their own thing that they maybe get a little bit closed yeah. about it. But once people have felt some success and they've felt whatever it is, there's, there's, you have a generous spirit about it all. And I really appreciate that about you. Um, but I had another friend who taught me, we we're at her place one day and um, like yourself, she's an exceptional artist, you know, um, does stuff around the world with her art and stuff. She sat down and she just grabbed a, remember those uh, pastel crayon kind of yeah, thing yeah. and yeah. had a thing. So she started drawing something and she goes, here, you draw for a while on this. And I, of course, I'm really in, I was, I was like, ah, I'm not gonna, but she yeah. said, no, 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 we're just, we're just, play, we're watching TV here. What do you, what's your problem? So then I started doing it and then she, and then I gave it back to her and we ended up with this really lovely thing that we just did together. And so David and I started doing that once in a while when we're watching TV. Yeah. I'll just, I, I got the same, you know, I've got my little sketch pad and I've got my little pastels. I just start doing one thing. Then he takes it and does it for a little while. And it's, it's just to do it. And, well, and it's, you know, you know what, one of the biggest lessons in that exercise, it's train of thought because mm -hmm. that's something for you and you look at it and then you start off at least trying to continue what they were doing. And then eventually goes into something that you're doing. Yes. They, back and they pick it up from there and uh you know we we had an exercise like that at art class and there was uh 30 of us in my class and they bought us a uh, six by eight foot canvas and they said all right everybody gets a square foot and we did a painting like the, you know everybody would go up and you'd start on your thing the next person would come next to it and it was amazing after it was all done like what came of it right and That's that was incredible. Was handing off, you know, the, uh, a concept, somebody then interpreting that concept, changing it slightly, obviously, to suit their style or whatever. And it just went on and on until you had this whole thing with 30 different squares on it, right? It was, But it looked like one big painting. It was pretty cool. Right. right? Oh, that sounds really interesting. Do you... Well, now, see, we don't have pictures of everything. Like you mentioned earlier, we don't have all of those snapshots of constantly, <laughs> you know, there, there, there's good and bad in that, right? We we were so much more in the moment yeah. because nobody was trying to think about a, taking a selfie or, or, or we were just doing what we were doing. And, yeah, yeah. and that, that had a lot of value. And I guess the other part of it is that there's not a lot captured. And and I must admit, I I love capturing moments on yeah. film. I, I I love that. And but they they both have their place. And like w w like with anything, it's about balance, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorting out where to find the balance. Oh my gosh. But you know, so another another quick funny thing is, uh, my mom told me when I was two years old, she used to sit me in the floor, me and my sister, and my sister would be going all over the place. She'd put a piece of paper down, a pencil, and I would sit there and doodle for hours. Just whatever, just making things, right? Whatever it was. Yes. She said, you know, wouldn't you'd never know what I was doing, but my mind was enjoying that whole thing, right? So, yes. I mean, even at that age, right? It was like uh, there was some connection between taking my hand and doing something, right? Right. And something with it. So, I mean, I, and I really, truly believe that, that uh, you can teach a lot of things, right? You can teach people, uh, you know, they have these painting classes for people. And, you know, and some people come out with wonderful paintings. Some people come out with not so wonderful paintings, but they all have a connection to be, be able to relate to doing that at the moment and getting some guidance and whatnot. So, I mean, the whole measure of, of art is uh you know as they say it's it's uh in the beholder it's like you know you look at something we all get something out of something i'll go to an art gallery and there'll be things that resonate with me you could be standing beside me and not not be that resonated by it but right. yet you see something over here that just blows your mind you know that's the individuality of all of us yes and 
that's what comes through in, in, in art is you, it's that individual. That's why I've never ever been uh, self-conscious about sharing my ideas with singers about how to sing. Cause I'm not worried about, I, I, I'm very confident and comfortable with what I do as right. a singer. You know, I, I'm, I'm confident it, it make I do it to the best of my ability and I'm generally happy with the result. When I record, I'm often very happy with the result. Sometimes not. So sometimes happy with the night, other nights, you know, I'll come off the stage some nights and geez, you know, to myself, like, God, you know, I miss those. And this. Other nights I come up with, and I'll say to the guys, man, I wish we were recording tonight. My, I was a perfect voice today, you know, every note. And, and it's no different with art, right? Like you, uh, you, you know, sometimes you're spot on, other times you're not. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but at the same time, I'm not, you know, I'm confident enough in what I do. I, I don't care if somebody takes something of mine and copies it and does something. If they can get something from it, great. You know, yeah. do it. Do yes. it. I mean, uh, that's how we all start, you know. I saw styles that I liked, you know, and, and I copied those styles. Uh, you know, it blew me away in art school, like the... Um, the incredible talent that was there of the other artists. There was, there was an amazing talent, sir. There was one guy there, his name was Doug Fast, and he was in a year ahead of me. But this guy was already working in an agency downtown, right, but still finishing school. He was so good. And uh, he would do everything from murals on the side of barns, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and wow. He did those murals in those days. Nowadays, you know, guys that do them, like Archer and all these guys around town, they project everything, right? Whereas uh, in those days, he just did it, right? It was like right. amazing. But he was so good, and, and he would come, and he was an older, so sometimes they would have the guys from a year ahead come, and they'd come into your class when you were doing things, and they'd walk around and give you hints. And he was great. I was doing these things of uh, uh, these uh, three racehorses head-on coming down the track, like real tight shot of the heads and the bodies, and he came in there and he took the brush and he just went like this, sort of in behind him and passed them like this and created a rail. And it was unbelievable, right? I never even saw that, right? And all of a sudden it just was boom. The, like the horses came right off the pavement. Yes, yes. Right? So, I mean, it's the vision is, is uh, what it's all about. And not all of us have uh, maybe as good or acute a vision on certain things, but on other things we do. So... You know, that's the beauty of art, right? That's right. The beauty of art. And like you said, and sometimes it's just someone with more experience knows that. It's, it's yeah. you know, if, if when you think of it, right, if someone doesn't know how to do a harmony and and they're they're thinking they're never going to get this thing right, and then you come and you show them, oh, this is what a harmony is, and this is how you do it, then all of a sudden they're sounding fabulous. And what they thought was somehow a trick or or yeah, something that yeah, yeah. seemed completely oh. out of their reach, now they know how. And it's like, oh, this is actually quite simple when you know how to do that. And yeah. and and that could be, you know, I'm you know, I'm not sure about the uh, the railing there. If uh, this gentleman, <laughs> you know, it, it, but what, whatever way he did it, and it just made it pop and come to life. He had the vision, right? Yes, yeah. and, I mean, and experience. I, I, for me, the horses were just coming down the track. Yes, him. The horses were coming around the bend, right? Oh. And, Right, because he added the railing like that, and it was just like really macro of the railing right beside the horses. It was it was an amazing thing, and, and taught me a lot. And uh, if you know, one big thing it taught me about was when I'm doing paintings, look at my painting and see, you know, what else might enhance that painting. Is there something I can do that can maybe, uh, you know, do more more life for that? Right, you know, right. whatever. I mean, you take a look at this painting up behind me here. I mean, I think one of the things that uh, really makes that painting is like the way the hands are out front with the harmonica. Right? Yes. It gives it some depth to go into the, the character. So, you know, these are things that, that you pick up. And, uh, you know, a lot of them aren't necessarily from art school. They're just from experience and doing it over, over time, right? And, right. And whatnot. But, uh, yeah. So. That's <laughs> uh this is amazing. I, I I just I can't thank you enough. This is uh, I'm just so excited. I'm excited for all of this. I, I loved your stories. I could sit and listen to your stories and for a very 
it would be next week and you'd be uh <laughs> pretty soon Kim will be calling you for dinner and saying get the heck uh, out of that thing but it's I just you, you know what I could tell you uh hours and hours of uh great bad stories of being on the road and funny things that happen too I mean there's yeah. all kinds of stuff a lot of people have said to me I should write a book you know but I don't, I don't even know where you can start I, you know well I, I can help you there I, I can really help you there maybe, uh, maybe <laughs> I can, uh you know, get a, a tape recorder and dictate everything, right? And then have somebody like yourself write it. <laughs> well, you can, you can do that, but there there are ways to map. Um, that's what I, I had a really good publisher that showed me how to map out my stories and, and, uh, and it made it all much like paintings. All of a sudden, it wasn't all that difficult, right? right. And you can, and I'll tell you something else for aspiring writers. Uh, I think it's called Timu, T-E-M-U, I believe. You can dictate things and it will, in within five minutes, it will have it all typed up to you. And it right. will come back to you. So I can, I can, I would gladly share that information <laughs> and all out how to do that. And then once you've done all of that, you put that together any way you would like to, and then send that off to an editor who will, who will put all that stuff together. So that, yeah, yeah. that is not hard, nor is it expensive to do. Because when I, uh, when I wrote, when I was writing my book, um, I had, of course, you know, with my vertigo and stuff, I'd fallen down and and uh, broke my uh, ankle and my wrist right in the middle of it. I couldn't type, and so my publisher set me up with that. Sweet. And it was it was a game changer. So a lot of so there was a there's a portion of my book that I just talked, yeah, and, yeah. and had that done, and it was you know it was it was really good. Before we finish here, here's I, I here's a few things that I don't want to forget to do this. I don't want to forget again, we're going to make sure that in in the show notes, we're going to have the the dates and I'll get all that off of you, all the dates of, of your upcoming shows and okay. where people can get a hold of you and also where people can get a hold of you for your paintings. And uh, with her permission, um, because, you know, I tried to get her to come and talk too, but she was she wasn't having any of it. So Kim, uh, Mrs. Lionheart uh, will will share, uh, we can share some of her stuff below too, where people can contact and get her just absolutely stunning jewelry. Really, so we can, we can pull her in. <laughs> yeah. she, blows my mind. she does this stuff because, you know, she's got these little tiny hands, right? <laughs> just so intricate, intricate, you know. Oh, she, her beadwork, her, her jewelry. I mean, she has been... Sometime you and Dave over here, and and you can you, she makes these little uh, um, villi- uh, little buildings. Uh, she got That's these kits. So on that, unbelievable! And she made um, one of sushi bar, and she had to make the little pieces of sushi, and they're about the size of a grain of rice. And I couldn't believe it, you know. Anyway, her, her, her patience. Well, maybe you know. <laughs> I'm not saying that says anything about you, Hank. That she's a very. <laughs> I, that that's if if there's a, uh, I mean we all have faults but that's one of my biggest faults that I don't have a lot of patience for stuff right. But she if, is just says when she I has paint, it so paint and get it done you know that, that's one of the reasons I don't use oil and I use uh, acrylics because they dry faster. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's the waiting for it, right? Oh my gosh. Now that I, I, I paint with acrylic as well, but I've been doing um through these classes, it's it's all in oil and oil has its its place for sure, but I, I like you, it's nice to <laughs> to have something that I <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I agree. Oh my gosh. Well, Hank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this. This was just oh, what, I pre- what a gift. Well, uh, do you want me to give you uh, just a quick list of what's coming up here? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, this coming Saturday, we're in Abbotsford for the Fraser Valley Blue Society with uh, the Smoking Hot Toasters. Nice. Okay, and then uh, the following week, which will be December 1st, we're at uh, Osborne Bay at uh, the Osborne Bay Pub. Okay. Uh, then on the 2nd, we're at Herman's Jazz Bar. And on the 8th at Frankie's Jazz Bar in Vancouver. Then on the 15th at the Mary Winspear. And then on the 17th at the Knox United. And people can go to the venues and uh, the event pages are there so they can get all the information off of those things. Okay, perfect. They want to uh, look. Uh, for me, they can request friend requests at uh, uh, Hank Lionheart on Facebook. Uh, or, uh, you know, they can... Uh, you know, they can find uh, the information uh, at, uh, you know, this uh, Smoking Hot Toasters on Facebook as well. 
Okay, so, perfect. That's, so that's awesome. Kind of and I, I'll make sure that I, uh, I'm not sure the date that this is going to actually come out. So I'll make sure that I share everything on my Facebook page in perfect. case this comes out later. But thank you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Uh, you are an absolute treasure oh. in, in every way. And I and I just, I'm just, uh, I'm grateful, grateful to, to know you and call you friend. And you, uh, for anybody, if you have not seen this man perform live, my gosh, get out there and see him because he is uh it is a sight to behold this is this is thank you so much and i will always be forever grateful and love you so much for marrying kim and i oh my gosh oh that's right that was that was beautiful they were married in our yard and i was very honored to perform that ceremony that okay. was great Best to you and, and uh, the family and Dave, and uh, thank you so much. Thanks again, Hank, for being with us. It was just awesome. I appreciate that you put in this big, long time with us, and thanks very much. And for everybody listening, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time. And do remember, you are loved. Thank you, Ellie, and I did find my joy. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you found a piece of your joy in this episode, I would love to hear about what came up for you so that we can continue to grow the impact of this show. Thanks again. See you soon. And remember, find your joy. Thank you.